Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Now, James H24 just updated a few days ago, and the biggest thing that was added was orbital stations and reusable drop pods. So, in this video, I'm going to cover how to make a simple orbital station like this. Also, equipped with it is a thruster which can take you to other planets. And yeah, it looks pretty cool. It generates its own power. And also, I'll cover all of the other things that have been added, the major things that is. So, without any further ado, let's get straight into it. Alright, so aside from the orbital station computer and the main orbital station parts, there are some things that have been added which will be essential for making your base. For example, the CO2 scrubbers for procuring oxygen and the steam radiator mainly. So what the steam radiator does is it converts the low pressure steam into water. The rate of conversion is 10,000 millibuckets per second, which is uh, half of the auxiliary cooling tower and five times more than the normal condenser the one block condensers that we have but none of these things actually work in the vacuum of space but steam radiators do so they can work in any environment you can stack them on top like this they are pretty big and they look very cool so yeah essential for making a power plant on any other planet where the atmosphere has not been tweaked yet because that functionality i think is not available right now so yeah, you can use the steam radiator to convert low pressure steam into water for your heat based power plants. Next up, we have the CO2 scrubber, which will collect carbon dioxide when supplied with power and the microgravity algae film, which will convert all of that carbon dioxide into oxygen. So this will be a renewable source of oxygen in any pressurized room that you have created. So you don't really have to supply it with external oxygen. You can just keep on recycling it. Now three thrusters which are in this mod is the xenon thruster first thing first the most newly added is this one which is the hdr3 it works with hydrogen if i'm not wrong and the lpw2 uses jet fuel and liquid oxygen the biggest one out of them all now all of these look very cool and based on the size i think uh, it will change how much thrust it can provide how fast it can take you to distant planets so the xenon one is the cheapest one and the lpw2 is the most expensive one out of all of them another big thing is the orbital station port now when we build the orbital station it will have a core which looks very similar to this but you can add other ports to it external ports which looks just like this and the orbital station computer is needed in order to travel to other planets and yeah other thing we also have solar panels which can help us generate power in the space so whenever our orbital station is facing the sun then we can generate power using the solar panels so that was it for most of the smaller things now let's build an orbital station so we first start with an empty hard drive right now we are on the earth so placing the empty hard drive in a star dark press the orb and that will create an orbital station with a unique station id that you can see here every station will have a different id and this is already processed so you don't really need to process it again but you do need to clone it make sure to have multiple copies of this as you are going to be needing this now i'm also going to set my landing coordinates here on earth for the drop pod and now we can make a vehicle which can take us from the earth to the orbital station oh sorry which can launch the orbital station first and then we'll make the vehicle which can take us there so you can see every crafting recipe using the nei mod which is same now we place down the orbital station which is a satellite and i'm going to place down five six meter thrusters and five uh hydrolox thrusters uh the twin hydrolox thrusters and with that the trip is possible so this configuration can send the orbital station into the earth's orbit so now we place our rocket on the launch pad and give it the required fuel which is going to be hydrogen and oxygen this is how it looks like pretty cool right so supplying it with some oxygen first and then hydrogen and once that's done we need to place the chip the orbital station hard drive which we made so make sure you have some copies and once that's placed we can launch the rocket and the orbit uh, the orbital station will be there right so there goes our rocket and in order to verify if you have done this process correctly or not if we take the hard drive 
for the orbital station and we place it in the star dot then it will say orbital station ready this means that we have done everything right and we can travel to that orbital station now so now let's make a vehicle to take us there the landing capsule goes first next goes a three meter fuel tank and a triple hydrolux thruster and a rocket is complete it should be able to take us from the earth to the orbital station now as we don't need to go very far uh, this rocket is not too big now it will need the same fuel as before i am going to place the hard drive for the orbital station and hydrogen and oxygen which are going to play an important role in this whole thing so i am going to take a lot of barrels of them now we are going to do some preparation so the environmental suit is going to have the pls upgrade filled up with oxygen along with that a lot of oxygen and hydrogen barrels some empty tanks barrels building materials you will also need some energy storage devices solar panels cables and uh, yeah your general survival things some food and stuff like that because you are going to be doing building based on what size of orbital station you are going to build now when you are traveling to other planets using the orbital station make sure that you have hard drives which are set to landing positions which are valid because if for example you land in water or you land in a place where your drop pod tips over then you are stuck on that planet which kind of sucks if you don't have other drop pods so yeah Anyways, we are going to our orbital station. Two, one, launch. Right, so after the animation ends, here we can see our orbital station core. This is where the initial landing capsule is going to dock. So once we touch here, the core will capture the landing capsule and secure it in place. Now press left shift to get out of the landing capsule and here we are on top of the orbital station core. Now in order to get the landing capsule out, you can press shift and right click in order to get it out in, into your inventory. And doing this will give you the landing capsule and now you can replace this with a drop pod. So taking a drop pod and right clicking it on the core We'll insert the drop pod here and now we can use this drop pod in order to travel back to the planet that we were orbiting. In case you don't have enough building materials or you need more things from your base then yeah traveling is easy. That is why we brought so much hydrogen and oxygen. So I'm going to set two barrels here one for oxygen one for hydrogen which is the fuel that the drop pod uses and not a lot of it actually and then again oxygen and hydrogen are pretty easy to make so that's pretty convenient so once all of this is filled we can see the earth or basically a camera position rotating which shows that the orbital station is going around the moon slowly fades away like this and we can see the sun's position also changing all of this is actually very calm and peaceful very cool left clicking will get us into the drop pod with the earth hard drive I, i'm going to place it and press shift in order to fall back to the earth so once again the animation will load in and then we'll start a descent back to the earth to the coordinates that we set as our landing zone so that's it we are back to the earth and if now i want to go back then once again just sit in the pod with the hard drive for the orbital station right click in the drop pod and press space to jump back to the orbital station the orbital core once again so the process in general is actually very convenient very easy and i think you will need more of these uh, docks if you have some cargo rockets or if they are going to add that in the future anyways now let's start building the orbital station which is going to be a big step so the first thing that i'm going to do is expand this platform to an 11 by 11 by default it is a 5 by 5 now that's a 7 by 7 one more layer should make it 9 by 9 and the final layer will set it to an 11 by 11 now i, I was just winging it here i made no designs previously so you can make it look much much better than what i am going to do here giving it a little bit of an aerodynamic shape and then making a border all around it this should seal this whole thing completely and yes as the orbital station is going around you are going to get on the dark side of the earth which is when things will get 
yeah like this pretty dark but the orbit itself is not very long so you will see the sun again very soon like we can see here so i'm going to raise up all of these walls right here and this entire compartment will be our main compartment building up the ceiling to close it from the top and then we can start up the important step which is going to be solar panel so i'm going to have a total of 14 solar panels on top of this main component or the main chamber here so i'm going to seal up using the paintable uh, cables and then place down more of the solar panels each solar panel is five by one in area and it produces uh, 2000 he when it is facing the sun so right now as we are in the dark uh, these solar panels won't produce any power whatsoever so yeah for half of the cycle the solar panels will produce power for half of the cycles they won't and here we connect the panels to the outside and once i connect them they should be able to power some storage blocks and some lights as we are on the dark side that's not happening right now but soon we shall see power production i'm going to link both of these cable lines and we should get 28000 hp per second which is pretty cool it should be able to power a lot of components so that's the solar panel setup now let's finish up or basically close up this main area here and we can add other areas to it using airlocks so that's the main area done we have stopped producing power and yeah i'm going to set the battery to input output and make some windows here because once we get to the light areas uh, it will look pretty good it will give a nice view of the outer space so making some two by three windows here and then we can start working on some more lighting work and adding other rooms so placing down the orbital station computer it says no engine available will take care of that real soon next up in order to add a second component i'm going to come behind here open up a space now the stair won't work right now until we have not pressurized this room it will work very well once the whole thing is pressurized and place a sliding seal door and now i'm going to make a three by three airlock or oh, sorry a three by one airlock if we are going by that and Connected to this airlock will be our second area, which will house two big tanks for hydrogen and oxygen. So right now I just made it, I think a seven by seven, but I'm going to expand it because uh, I realized that this size was a bit too small for the tanks. So I'm going to expand this by one more. So make it a nine by nine. But yeah, this is where basically just two big tanks are going to go for the hydrogen and oxygen. And make sure to place down two seal, sliding seal doors like this in order to make an, a successful airlock. This way, the oxygen the, that we have pressurized won't escape. Placing down some more solar panels on the second uh, compartment, the second section of the orbital station that we have made. And you can use a similar airlock design on the sides in order to add more components to your orbital station. So if you want to do some research work, add some machinery, then you can make airlocks on the side in a similar fashion and keep adding more components. So yeah, that's the second component done. I'm going to connect both of the solar panels and that should give a total power output of 48,000 HP per second. Of course, 4,000 is going to two of the lights. So that's why we are getting 44,000 instead of 48, but yeah. Now I'm going to set up some air vents using the oxygen barrels that we have in order to pressurize this room here. So five in total should give one atmospheric pressure. And as soon as this is done, our movement will change. So we can walk in here like we did on the earth for some reason. So once this room is pressurized, now we can place down some scrubbers connected to power, which will start capturing carbon dioxide. And this carbon dioxide can then go in a microgravity algae film, which will convert it into oxygen. And this doesn't require any power, which is pretty good. Now this oxygen can be looped back into our barrel here so i'm going to add some more scrubbers and algae film i have not calculated the exact rate of production or the rate of capture of these machines 
so i'm not going to min max this design in any way just as i told you i'm bringing this whole thing this is my first time trying out this new update so with that done now i'm going to connect some or basically i'm going to place down some sealed fluid cables in order to get hydrogen and oxygen into the drop pod section so that we can travel freely to any planet that we are orbiting so that's the pipe connected and now the orbital station core will always have liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen finally it's time to place down the engines that will propel our station for this i'm using the lpw2 which is enough in order to push the station to any planet if you were using some weaker engines like the xenon you would need a lot of them but this station produces uh, enough thrust this engine produces enough thrust it requires liquid oxygen and jet fuel make sure it is connected to the orbital station and once it is then the orbital station computer will detect that you have placed an engine and it will show that now you can travel to other planets so for now i'm going back to earth and get a hard drive for eve and as i told you make sure that you have set it correctly in a landing zone and then we can use the engine that we have the lpw2 in order to travel to eve the animations there will be pretty cool so i have the hard drive I'm going back to the orbital station now and once we place our hard drive in the computer then it will start its journey so yeah placing down the hard drive for eve in the orbital station computer and there we go the engines will start firing you can see the animation which is amazingly done everything in this mod just looks too good like seriously the machines are just amazing great work by all of the developers that worked on this walk so yeah that's our orbital station looking good traveling now once you get back here for some reason we can't see the flame particles but yeah from the side you can see them and here's eve the orbital station will just rotate itself and get set in an orbit so yeah this is how you can travel to other planets using the orbital station now if you want to descend to that planet the process is the same as we did on the earth make sure you have the hard drive for eve place it in the drop pod and then press space to drop down to the planet that you are orbiting this can be a moon or any other thing just make sure that the place you are going to land is where the drop pod can stay upright otherwise you are going to have problems now on this planet my suit is going to melt so not gonna stay here for long with the orbital station hard drive i'm going back to the orbital station this entire thing is like very convenient so we are back and now let's get back to earth so traveling to earth you can see the progress here and once again you can see the engines fire now i tried placing down the chemical plant here with an infinite barrel inside it in order to produce hydrogen and oxygen on the orbital station but for some reason the infinite water barrels are not working either i have to place them in a separate barrel outside the chemical plant it's something like that uh, i don't know but yeah make sure you have hydrogen and oxygen available for using the drop pod because once the station travels it will set itself correctly and start orbiting the planet the animations are just amazing here so yeah for some of the final changes what i did was just add some more microgravity algae film and some more co2 scrubbers in order to increase the production and this is how you can make an orbital station in the james h24 and use it to travel planets and go to them come back to them using the reusable drop pods uh, aside from that if i will find anything new or something that's worth making a separate video on i will be sure to do it very soon in these upcoming days because i am going to have some time in these days 
So yeah, I hope you guys learned something from this video. You found it helpful. If you did, please do smash that like button and also subscribe to the channel. We are very close to 25,000. I hope we can reach there before the end of this year. So yeah, hope you guys have a great weekend. Till then, peace out and stay safe, my guys.